Hey everyone, so over the past six weeks or so, a lot of people have been leaving comments on my channel claiming that data from the James Webb Space Telescope disproves Big Bang cosmology. This is very dumb and wrong, but it got me curious as to why so many people are saying this. A little investigation turned up the fraud responsible, so let's dig into this one, shall we? As it turns out, the main culprit of the frenzy was this clickbait video from a channel called Future Unity, which has amassed over 3 million views in just a couple weeks. The latest pictures from the JWST have proven the Big Bang Theory did not happen, sending the scientific community into a frenzy. What are these latest pictures from the JWST? How do the pictures prove the Big Bang Theory was wrong? Join us as we dive into how the James Webb Space Telescope finally proved the Big Bang Theory is wrong. So that's the story they're peddling. But they didn't come up with this tripe. They're just recycling the narrative for views. So where did it come from? Well, let's hear what they cite as the proposed alternative to Big Bang cosmology. Let's pause here and ask what happens if the scientific establishment accepts that the Big Bang Theory is flawed. There must then be a new way to explain the universe's beginnings. One likely explanation is plasma filamentation, which has been around for about five decades. This process can actually be explained using physical processes common in the laboratory. Plasma is the electrically conducting gas that forms most of all the matter in space, including the stars and the space between the stars. Surprise, surprise, it's plasma cosmology. For those of you who don't know, I've debunked about half a dozen charlatans pushing this and related Electric Universe crap on my channel already. This time it's coming from a guy named Eric Lerner who runs the channel LPP Fusion. Here's a taste. Oh, don't pay attention to what Eric Lerner is saying. He's been saying that for 30 years, ever since he published the book, The Big Bang Never Happened. Why, it even had the same title as the uh, article, almost. Lerner's sarcasm is ironically a solid introduction to who he is. He wrote a book in 1991 called The Big Bang Never Happened, and much more recently, a crappy blog post of the same title, which is what catalyzed this current insanity. Apart from the bald-faced lies, all of the talking points in this article are garbage and have been debunked many times by various astrophysicists. He's just desperately piggybacking on current events to try to gain the relevance he's been wanting for 30 years but can't get because he's a complete buffoon. Let's briefly read through for some laughs. First, he points to some surprises that are causing cosmologists to panic so much that they put the word panic in the title of a paper. Well, the title of the paper begins with Panic at the Discs, which is a pun on the band name Panic at the Disco, and it has nothing to do with the Big Bang model. So when he says the papers don't actually say how images are inspiring panic, it's because they aren't. He just doesn't understand wordplay. He then goes right into a blatant quote mine of researcher Alison Kirkpatrick, implying that she is disparaging Big Bang cosmology rather than referencing certain minutiae regarding galactic structure and growth. She even had to take to changing her name on Twitter to Alison the Big Bang Happened Kirkpatrick because of this bad press from Lerner. Two paragraphs in and you can already see what a creep this guy is. Anyway, he then gets into his main thesis. Galaxies imaged by JWST are too small, too smooth, too old, and too numerous. And everyone is freaking out about it. In the interest of keeping things brief, let's read what the lead author of this paper, Leonardo Ferreira, has to say about Lerner's claims, which he left as a comment on another video debunking Lerner from cosmology professor Brian Keating. The paper is concerned with the rest frame optical of galaxies at Z greater than 3, which Hubble could not observe. A lot of what we are seeing is that those galaxies that were observed more to the UV can now be observed spatially in the optical. So Dr. Brian Keating is correct to show that for galaxies well resolved in Hubble, nothing changes. And we still see lots of mergers though, it's not like they are absent. And some of the disks can be undergoing mergers as well. One particular point that is interesting for follow-up studies is that for for example, galaxies could reform disks after mergers more easily than we thought previously. The paper has nothing to do with the Big Bang. We don't even go that far back, around 1 billion years after the BB. I think Lerner's case is that he is not even wrong. He needs to get more things right to be even wrong. Lead author of the paper here.
He was challenged on this by some learner acolyte, and he responded once. I won't read this in full, as it's full of technical details, but it clearly shows the lead author of the paper addressing and refuting the ignorant claims that Lerner makes. So how does Lerner get all of this wrong and why? What is it he's been clinging to all of these years? Plasma cosmology. This is a steady state model of the universe that was discredited decades ago, largely due to observations of the cosmic microwave background radiation that are incompatible with plasma cosmology, while specifically predicted by Big Bang cosmology and to quantifiable precision, and a bunch of other reasons. That's right, there is no conspiracy against plasma cosmology. It's just wrong. It's like when we disproved the ether, or phlogiston, or geocentrism. It's wrong. Because he's wrong but won't admit it, he has to make up bullshit. Enter the pseudoscience, electromagnetism being responsible for galactic structure and activity, and all the other bad science that electric universe peddlers hijacked in order to cobble together their grift. In fact, because of how vocal and irritating Lerner is in spewing his nonsense all over the internet, several astrophysicists have taken to dismantling his script as well. Rather than taking that tangent myself, as it's highly technical, I'll just link to relevant resources in the comments if you're interested in getting into the nitty-gritty details. To give you the short and shallow version, very distant galaxies appear more fully formed than we would have expected, which merely suggests that galaxies form more rapidly than we thought. And then he spews a bunch of nonsense about galactic size, claiming that distant galaxies ought to look larger because in the early universe they were much closer. As Leonardo Ferreira said, they are young galaxies, so we should expect them to be intrinsically smaller. That's pretty much it. In science, a singular observation does not overturn a successful model. That sort of claim is exclusively made by charlatans who are targeting an audience of laypeople who don't know anything about the model in question. Laypeople don't have the ability to cite all the successful predictions of the Big Bang cosmological model, so someone like Lerner telling them about one result that could be twisted to seem superficially in contradiction with the model is enough to get some people to reject it. In actuality, observations by JWST are perfectly aligned with Big Bang cosmology. They just require some refinement of certain details, which is exactly what one would expect from a new instrument bringing in new data the model will inevitably be refined. For example, it was refined in the late 90s due to data showing that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. That's how science works. Because of this simple fact, Lerner is reduced to discarding well-understood and well-substantiated science, only to replace it with made-up nonsense which falls apart under the tiniest bit of scrutiny. Here's a taste. These beams have to create a hierarchical filament a very dense uh, magnetic vortex filaments. The electrons trapped in these filaments, which survive for billions or tens of billions of years, scatter light at microwave and radio frequency radiation, not at shorter radiation uh, wavelengths. So these filaments created by quasars, uh, AGN and other phenomena create a radio fog which thermalizes and smooths the CMB to the situation that we now observe. So yeah, first of all, if you caught my debunk of Wall Thornhill, you're familiar with this plasmoid rubbish. But more importantly, since Lerner wants the Big Bang to not be real, he needs to explain away the CMB. That's what this nonsense is about filaments producing microwave fog. It's a total non-starter. Nothing he could be describing produces the near-perfect black body spectrum we see. It's false at face value. And beyond that, there are the myriad phenomena such as the sanyaev zeldovich effect and the integrated sachs wolf effect, things I described in great detail in my debunk of Sky Scholar, which again are totally ignored and unexplained by any of these clowns. 
In the end, Lerner is nothing more than a crackpot. He's a delusional narcissist who wants so badly to be a real scientist that he has conjured up an alternate reality where science is wrong, just so he can play the iconoclastic hero. Any slightly anomalous or unexpected data must signal a crisis in cosmology instead of routine advancement of the field. Anyone who debunks him must be a gatekeeper, instead of him just being objectively wrong and generally clueless about the field. Once again, Big Bang cosmology is supported by a wide variety of observations, such as relative abundance of light elements, properties of the CMB, all stuff relating to the first half million years or so after the initial singularity, whereas early galaxy formation is already a half billion years after the initial singularity. That we are learning more about galaxy formation does not negate what already works about the model, and any challenge to the model must explain these observations just as well or better, and Lerner does not do that. He just makes up nonsense that falls apart instantly. What everyone should strive to understand that will render them less susceptible to this kind of rubbish is that science doesn't progress with baseless accusations. Lerner will never be taken seriously because he does not even accurately describe or portray Big Bang cosmology. He doesn't talk about the enormous success of the model, either because he genuinely doesn't understand it, or because he needs to downplay its validity to ensnare the gullible viewer. In science, successful models are not discarded on a whim, only to be replaced by weaker models with no predictive or explanatory power. Plasma cosmology does not explain the things that Big Bang cosmology explains. In fact, it explains precisely nothing. That's why it was discarded decades ago, and anyone pushing it is ignored. Because they are wrong. That's all there is to it. There is no conspiracy. There are no politics. Anyone who says otherwise is just trying to elevate their fake science above real science. And if someone peddles a narrative that an entire field of science is wrong because this one guy says so, you know they're full of it. When someone talks about a crisis in some scientific field, you can more or less discount them on the spot. It's just a backdoor into the mind of the suggestible viewer with an anti-establishment bias. Nothing more. So that's all I wanted to say. Of course, we could go through hours of learner talking and perform a highly technical debunk, but that seemed like overkill. I just wanted to address some of the genuine questions I've been receiving as to whether there's any validity to this rumor and respond with a resounding no. Ignore Eric Lerner just as you would any of the nuts I've debunked in the realm of astrophysics. I'll see you next time.